But Don Nealon's Mountaineers enjoy walking in where angels fear to tread. As the hills of West Virginia resound with the sounds of Goldenville football. Here is Harris in trouble. Stiff arms, a would-be tackler, comes out of the 25 to 20. Goes around about it to 15 to 10 to 5. A touchdown with Virginia. He did it. to be a mountaineer wherever you may be. What's going on, Mountaineer Nation? Welcome into the Country Roads webcast. As always, I'm your host, Jordan Cruz. And breaking news this morning, so much for a uh, quiet start to your week, right? I'm here on Monday morning. I'd actually just finished recording our uh, Season 5, Episode 148 of the CRW Podcast, our Oklahoma Review and Reaction. I'm trying to get that out later today, but no sooner than I get finished recording that, sit down to edit it and get it breaking news on my phone from ESPN, Shane Lyons out at West Virginia as athletic director. So, you know, figured I got a little bit of time here before work. Why not come on here, go live. Let's talk about it a little bit, what this means, what just happened and what could happen for the future for West Virginia moving forward. Now that this has occurred, is this the first domino to fall in a line of dominoes that's going to happen now in a very interesting few weeks throughout West Virginia football, but that's one thing's for sure. It will be interesting. So, don't know how many people are in here on a Monday. I'm sure most people are probably at work, but um, maybe you'll catch it on the playback if you are at work. But if you are in here, as always, go ahead, drop your thoughts on this breaking news in the comments down below. We'll talk about it, pull up some of your comments as we do. Um, if you're in here live or if you're going to end up watching this on a playback later, either way, before I get too far into it, I'm going to share the article with you guys. But before I get too far into it, I just want to remind you guys, if you would do us a favor, hit the like button. That'll help us help this video performance, help future video performances, and hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Helps us, helps you, helps get more of this Mountaineer sports content out to Mountaineer Nation. But breaking news indeed. So it's uh, very uh, very pertinent. Wanted to get this out quick, and uh, hopefully some of you guys are around, even though it's Monday morning. But if not, I know you guys will tune in on the playback. And appreciate you doing that. And if you're in on the playback, I know you don't have the live chat, but let drop your thoughts in the comments. We'll still respond to your comments there um, later in, uh, you know, in print form. But if you're in here, I can respond to them live if, uh, if you drop them in there. So go ahead and do that and engage with us as we continue to try and go the Country Roads webcast community throughout Mountaineer Nation. Jacob Yoho in here. Appreciate you hopping in, Jacob. He says, thank God. Yeah, I think that's the feeling of a lot of Mountaineer Nation uh, right now is uh, getting rid of Shane Lines. A lot of people were calling for it. I didn't know if it would happen, but it definitely does. And it happened abruptly and it happened quickly in the blink of an eye. Shane Lyons gone and it could be the first domino to fall. We'll talk about that more as we go throughout. But let me pull up this screen real quick and share this article with you guys uh, from ESPN. It's one second here. All right. Let me pull it up uh, full screen. Get me out of the way and do it better. Okay, 
So from Pete Thamel, of course, who was the one uh, who reported it on College Game Day. And, you know, once Pete Thamel reports something, it's almost a done, done deal. So I think that's why that report for being on College Game Day was such a huge thing that it would it would come out there and it would come from Pete Thamel because that's when he knew it was real. And a lot of people wondered if West Virginia beating Oklahoma would change anything. Apparently it's not, at least as far as we know in, Ly- in Shane Lyons' case, at least at this point. Pete Thamel, Shane Lyons out as West Virginia Athletic Director amid struggles. This came at 9 a.m. West Virginia has agreed to separate with Athletic Director Shane Lyons, sources told ESPN. Lyons has been West Virginia's Athletic Director since 2015 but a combination of budget issues and the school's struggling football program led to a change in direction. The school has not made a decision on Coach Neil Brown's future, sources told ESPN. So verdict's still out on Neil Brown, it appears. But with Shane Lyons gone, I think that points to the direction of Neil Brown probably being gone as well because the new athletic director is going to want to hire his own coach. So maybe they just wanted the new athlete, a new athletic director to hire whoever Neil Brown's replacement is, kind of my standing on this. But uh, Neil Brown's future remains in flux, according to the source that are talking to Pete Thamel, and maybe that's dependent on West Virginia making a bowl game or not. Who knows? We'll see. Lines departure highlights the highlights Brown's uncertain status as he's 21 and 24 in four seasons and one loss away from clinching the program's third losing seasons in his four years. Brown did top Oklahoma to snap WVU's nine-game losing streak to the Sooners, but at four and six, the Mountaineers remain a long shot to reach a bowl game. Lions is expected to be replaced on an interim basis by Rob Alsop, who is the school's vice president for strategic initiative sources told ESPN. The placement of someone from President Gordon Gee's executive staff is an indicator of how distinctly the school wants to change directions. Yeah, definitely. Great point there. The school is expected to immediately begin an athletic director search with the hire expected to come quickly if the school does make a change in football coach. It's become a common trend in recent years to expedite a search and let them be paired with a new coach that they help choose. So there you go, ESPN even saying they expect Neil Brown's coming shortly after this, and the only reason they're doing this is because it's the new trend in college football to have an athletic director and a coach come, you know, kind of as a pair of deer, pairing, uh, uh, excuse me, I can't think of the term right now, but, you know, come together in lockstep, uh, the athletic director and the coach. Um, so who knows what what's gonna, that's going to happen because – you know, athletic directors have their favorites, so a lot, I think, of West Virginia's coach now may depend on who they hire as their athletic athletic director. Um, I know Rob Mullins, who I think is over at – is he at uh, Oregon, I believe? Um, or is that Whit Babcock? Whit Babcock, if you take yeah, – Rob Moore, Mullins is over at Oregon uh, from West Virginia. I think that's got to be a favorite maybe if West Virginia can pull him away from there. But continue on with the article, Browns by out. If, if dismissed after the regular season, expected to be nearly $17 million, looms large over the departure of Lions. While there's offset in the contract that can Brown an extension in April of 2021 when Brown had a record of 11-11, that pushed the deal. The reason that was Shane Lyons is out as athletic director. That contract extension, or even if he gives Neil Brown that contract extension without the guaranteed money and the buyout and stuff, Shane Lyons probably sticks around as West Virginia's athletic director because West Virginia could probably, you know, fire Neil Brown if they wanted to. But Neil, the contract extension is what really put West Virginia in between a rock and a hard place, and that was the nail in Shane Lyons' coffin, in my opinion. Uh, finishing out the article, if WV moves on from Brown in the cycle, it will be a significant financial strain on the athletic department. One of the criticisms of Lyons is that he wasn't creative and aggressive enough in finding new revenue streams. As someone with a strong business background may be coveted in the search for WV's next athletic director, so that's an interesting point. Lyons is a well-respected administrator who came to West Virginia from Alabama, where he served as deputy AD from 2011 to 2015. Lyons' career includes multiple prestigious achievements as he has chaired the Big 12 athletic director, served on the NCAA Division I Council and the Oversight Committee, also part of the current roster on the Transformation Committee. The interim... Who was at that? At also, so, uh, what was the first name? Let me go back and pick that up again. Uh, so Rob Alsop, uh, West Virginia's current uh, AD on interim basis, comes from a political background. A West Virginia graduate, both undergraduate and law school, worked in various roles for uh, Earl Ray Tomlin and Joe Manchin when they were both uh, governor of West Virginia, respectively. So that's a little bit on the replacement and. Uh, yeah, so uh, Shane Lyons out as West Virginia Athletic Director. You know, maybe he lands on his feet. Who knows where he'll end up. But 
like I said, I think the contract extension really doomed him um, here at, at West Virginia. Let me pull this back down and uh, get back up here with you guys. But, yeah, so uh, that's kind of where we're at right now. Really uh, interesting time. It's going to be an interesting few weeks here uh, at West Virginia. I don't have a ton of time, but I did want to come up on, it, on here and touch on this with you guys. Breaking news. Wanted to, you know, share that with you all. And I know, like I said, it's Monday morning, so a lot of people may be at work, may catch this on the playback. But, you know, as far as what happens next, you know, I titled this Shane Lines out at WVU, what happens next? Because in my personal opinion, I feel like this is just the first domino to fall that's going to fall over, like I said, an interesting next few weeks for West Virginia. I don't know how soon anything else will happen. I don't know if they're waiting to see West Virginia lose one more game and, you know, secure a losing season and not reach bowl eligibility before they make a decision on Neil Brown. But at this point, there's two games left. I honestly kind of think they'll let him coach these final two games and then make an announcement on him. And they're just delaying the inevitable. Neil Brown may already know. He may have already known that Shane Lines was out as well. Who knows how breaking this was, you know, from within inside the department. But either way, Shane Lines out. Um, I believe it's the first domino to fall. Just kind of speculation now at this point. Um, I think what West Virginia lets Neil Brown coach these final two games, he's out as well. West Virginia's new athletic director gets to handpick his replacement, and we'll be looking at a new West Virginia football coach in 2023. I think this uh, confirms that to me. I think this also shows the fan base that, yes, we're excited about the Oklahoma win, but it doesn't change anything. We want to give you guys a better brand of football. And uh, shout out to Gordon Gee for that. You know, if Shane Lyons was going to – stick with Neil Brown and, you know, ride the ship to the bitter end because it was his guy and his contract extension and Gordon Gee stepped in and and made a move, then that's awesome because, you know, I, as the ESPN article mentioned there, the replacement, you know, coming from Gordon Gee's side of things maybe speaks to that. So um, either way, I definitely, you know, we all want the, what's best for the future of West Virginia football. And if getting a new athletic director helps us reach that better future, then I'm all for it. So this is the first step, that, you know, that I think in a few that are going to come, but I'm excited about it. It's very interesting. There's a lot of things to talk about. I appreciate you guys hopping in and chat that did here. Jacob Yoho again. Um, he said, I'll sleep a lot better tonight because uh, I know if I did what Shane did, his ass would have been canned when he did it. Yeah, it's that's the truth. You know, it's it's really like, I, you know, you can't say it enough. Giving Neil Brown that extension was the nail in Shane Lyons' coffin. You can't really talk too bad about the Neil Brown hire. You can now at this point because of the results, but at the time, everyone thought it was a great hire. You know, Shane Lyons thought it was a great hire. Even me personally, I thought it was a great hire, and most people thought it was a great hire, but it's the extension that people were looking at questionable then because we were 11-11 at the time. It's the extension with the guaranteed money uh, that really killed Shane Lyons, and yeah, I agree with you there, Jacob Yoho. Uh, Kent Fultz, appreciate you chop, hopping in and chiming in. I don't think I've seen you in here before. Um but appreciate you uh, coming in and hope you continue to come back. But he says, yeah, his contract extension to a below 500 win coach. Yeah, exactly. Never. I mean, even at the time when he extended, it wasn't above 500. I think we were 11, 11 at the time. So yeah, definitely. That's what, that's what killed it. Absolutely. But so that's just kind of my thoughts. That's, you know, wanted to detail the Shane line situation for you guys. We'll be here to break it down as more news becomes available. Uh, like I said, going to have plenty of content coming out here on the country roads webcast channel. So if this video is your you know, first time tuning into us, we cover WVU sports, you know, football and basketball on the channel. We uh, have hosted a podcast since 2018, just got into the YouTube side in this past year, trying to do that a little bit more and uh, definitely been enjoying that. But so we get podcast episodes on the football side every week that you can find here on YouTube. And then, of course, the audio versions on any podcast platform. But uh, for you guys here, you get the video version every week, preview and a review. And then, of course, a Hoops podcast every week, and we're doing post-game shows for every WVU basketball game, post-game uh, live streams for every WVU football game as well. So plenty of times for you guys to come in live. If you're not catching this one live, like I said, I know it's a Monday morning. A lot of people probably won't, but if you're catching this on the playback, um, definitely come over to our channel if you would. Subscribe to us if you love WVU, if you love West Virginia sports. We're always talking about that and appreciate and enjoy talking it with you guys, you know, in the chat as well on these live streams. So subscribe to us. So, you know, when we go live and hit that notification bell to really help you as well as helping us because it gets more of this Mountaineer sports content out to Mountaineer nation. And if you're in here watching this live, or if you're watching it on a playback, do us a favor, hit the like button. That'll really help this video performance, which in turn will help the channel as we continue to dry cry as we continue. Excuse me. Can't talk right now. I'm so excited and uh, surprised over the Shane lines news. It's got my tongue and everything, but, um, 
as we continue to try and grow the Country Roads webcast community uh, throughout Mountaineer Nation. But I think this is, uh, like I said, it's going to be a next interesting next few weeks, but it's a super exciting time uh, to be a Mountaineer fan because it looks like we're going to see some changes within the football program. And I, for one, think that we desperately are in need of that. And if it's going to improve it, I'm all for it because, like, like me and I'm sure most of you that are tuned into this, all I want to do is see West Virginia win. So I'm going to get up out of here before too long. Like I said, I'm going to go try and uh, get the episode uh, 148, season five, episode 148 of the CRW podcast uploaded for you guys, our Oklahoma review and reaction. Kind of feels a little bit dated now with all this news coming out. But once it broke on, you know, I had a little bit of time before work. I figured why not go live, talk about it a little bit with you guys and kind of get my thoughts out on it, um, which, you know, like I said, the extension I think is what did him in. I think Gordon Gee stepping in speaks volumes, and I think this is the first domino to fall of many, and we'll just it's just a matter of when the next is going to fall now. But we'll be here to cover it all along the way. Appreciate you guys that tuned into this live. Appreciate you guys tuning in on the playback. Sub us up here at Country Roads Webcast. Plenty of Mountaineer sports content coming on the football side and on the basketball side as it's you know basketball season gearing up, and although football season's winding down, it's going to be a lot of interesting things to talk about now with this first domino falling, I believe. So we'll be here to cover it. Definitely tune in to us if you're a Mountaineer fan. Appreciate all you guys in Mountaineer Nation and in the Country Roads webcast community. As always, I'm Jordan Cruz, and until next time, let's go Mountaineers.